There's some really important things that you should be doing in your garden this week. It's the end of autumn, winter is just around the corner, and before the first frosts arrive, you should be doing the following things. And I really can't stress how important it is for you to do it now. If you leave it a couple of weeks, it's too late. So now that you've got all these spaces in your garden, like I have at the end of summer, because you've removed all your summer color, you've now got this. So what do you do with it? What is a quick fix that you can get around it? One of the easiest ways is to sow seed. And the seed I'm going to show you to use is Namaquilan daisies. First of all, what you need to do is just turn over the soil. Make sure that you turn it over well. And I'm using this little tiller, fantastic, you see? Good weapon, and all you do when you do this is you're really just getting it loosened up. And remember, this is not a new piece of garden. So if you're going into a new bed, so a virgin bed that you're busy making, then you're really gonna need some more hardcore tools like a fork and a spade so you can really get down and turn it. Next thing we need to do is we need to add in some compost and some bone meal. Then you take your same tool again and work it in. Remember, you don't want the compost to be left on the top of the soil. Okay, so once we've done that, we undo this guy and we're going to use a metal rake. Now, it's important that you use a metal rake when you're trying to even out surfaces. It's way better than a plastic rake because it ha doesn't have so much give. Now let's get to prepping the seed. The great thing about Namaquilan daisies is that you can buy them in mixed packs like this, or you can get them in small little packs. So if you're doing a little, little patch, well, you've got the economy of scale right. But in order to get my sewing correct, what I want to do is I want to use a bit of mealy meal. Remember, you could use flour for this as well, or you could use river sand or just some garden soil. And then I'm gonna sprinkle some of my seeds in. Yeah, that should do it. Give it a good mix and in this way when you mix it like this what it does aid is just the distribution of your seed so everything's not coming up in these little clumps all over right so now all I've got to do is get down to the sowing all you want to do is just gently sprinkle it out and you can see by the use of the mealy meal this really does help just distribute the seeds quite evenly and you can use this when sowing anything from veggies to herbs, to any flowers, and it really does make life a whole lot simpler and make sure that you get good value out of your packet of seed. All right, nicely evenly distributed. What you need to do now is take the same rake that you used, which is the metal tine rake. Take it, run it over, and just run it over. And in this way, all you're actually doing is you're turning the seed and just covering it very, very gently. All they need now is a very good watering. Keep them well watered for at least the first 10 days until they start germinating, and then you can cut back on the water. This is the time of the year that I love, because I get to put in all my winter and spring flowering bulbs. I get to have a little taste of England, because my favorite to put in are daffodils. Now last year, if you went on the hunt for daffodils, you wouldn't have found them, because it was a massive crop failure, so they had none to sell in the shops. However, this year, we're safe. Remember, you can only plant daffodils now. The thing is, with any bulbs, remember that most times treat them like a holiday. You pay deposit, you pay money, you go on a great holiday, you come back, and what do you have? Gorgeous pictures to remember it by memories. And that's how you need to treat these little guys. There are some that are very different, like the indigenous bulbs, which might go on and on and on. However, most of the European bulbs that we plant are simply just for this one season. Why? Because our temperatures don't get cold enough during the winter in order for them to succeed for the following year. So I've got some daffodils here and I'm going to put them in right next to this silver thyme that I've got. Remember, it's the same planting ritual. What I want to do, sprinkle a bit of compost around, add one or two handfuls of bone meal, just sprinkled on top of it, and then dig it in. Now, you'll notice I'm doing a very small area and I've got about eight bulbs here. Do not be tempted to split the bulbs up and pop one in there, one in there, one in there, hoping to be able to litter them all over your garden. The real impact with bulbs is when you put them very close together, 
in proximity so when they do come up it's a pow little burst of color almost like it's popping right out your garden and remember when you're looking at the bulbs on the back of the packet it'll tell you how deep you should be planting them and this says two to five centimeters now in order to get that right well there are a couple of things that you can use to help you you can use one of these tools that actually have the different either in centimeters there or in inches okay now we don't work in inches we work in centimeters so you'll see it's not much I mean take a look at that that's hardly anything the other way is just to use a general planting tool like this little guy which all it does you just pop it in make your holes and I suggest that you do all of this first don't make a hole and plant the bulb don't do that because then you cover it up and you actually don't know where you planted it because you forget so rather make all your holes first because then you won't lose anything and you won't forget where you've put them and remember bulbs are just like onions they've got the top and they've got the base all right the pointy part is the part that needs to face up because that's where it's going to shoot from so we're going to take this little guy and all we do is in our little hole that we've already got here we just pop the little baby in two centimeters below the soil two to five there's enough leeway there so there they are Notice, really close together, about five to six centimeters apart. Now that I've done that, all I do is just run my hand over it like that. Give it a little pat. Most importantly, remember where I planted them in the garden and remember to tell all of the people that are involved in your garden that I planted something there so that they don't go trying to plant something else around it or invariably dig it up. So all these guys need now is a good watering once a week, a very good deep watering. That's all that you need for these guys to start growing and pushing through the bulbs. Everything else they need is already inside there. Go out, find them, plant them, and enjoy them. Although it's nearly time to prune your roses, you'll still be surprised as to how much they're flowering. You're really thinking, oh, I've got to get my secateurs out and get working, but hold your horses not that time yet they still are producing flowers although the temperatures have dropped hugely and what you've got to do is the critical thing and in fact if you've got roses you should be doing this every single week it's called deadheading and I don't care if you've got one rose or 100 this is something that you've got to do all the time why should you be doing this not because I just want you to get out in the garden and do something no what it does is every time you deadhead which is basically the removal of spent flowers. When you do that, you encourage the plant to put energy into producing more flowers for you. As soon as you leave a dead or a dying flower on the plant, what happens is the energy just keeps going into it and going into it. And the plant starts thinking, I've got to make seed, I've got to make seed. And that's when you end up with that fruit on the rose, which is called a rose hip. Now you don't want that, you want more flowers. So all you've got to do, grab a sharp pair of secateurs, you find a bloom like this that's spent, it's going over, you count three. One, two, three. Third leaf. All right, let me open this up so you can have a good look. There's the third leaf. One, two, three. Third leaf, you go just above it and you just cut it off. All righty, and this little guy is on its way out, so the same thing count. One, two, three, and just above it, make a little cut. Okay, that's all that you want to do. Repeat that process over the entire rose bush. When you see things like this, I don't know who's been attacking this one, but this isn't right. Do you see all that stem that's left there? You don't want to deadhead like that. You really want to deadhead, watch carefully, just like that, because right in there, if you look very closely, you can actually see there's the new bud. That's the new little growth point that's going to start coming through. And the more you prune closer to these and you do that exercise over the bush, the more you're going to encourage new growth. If you leave stems on it like that, it's going to end up dying, rotting back, possibly causing diseases. And once again, the plant's putting all that energy into that and you're going to end up with dead stalks like that. And that's not what we want. So get out there and get deadheading and you'll be guaranteed to have loads more flowers before pruning season.